If you're looking to upgrade from a rib or an open sports boat to something with all weather capability that you can use all year round, there's plenty of choice, mainly from Scandinavia. Botnia, Nordstar, Sargo, Axopar, Exo, the list goes on and on. So why plump for a Swedish built all aluminium boat that most people in the UK probably have never heard of? Well, we have the perfect man to discuss that with because Simon here has invited us down to have a go on his Vigo C8. I suppose the question is, given the, you know, the list of brands I've just reeled off, why is it that you settled on, on this particular boat? So the first thing for me was a roof, and I wanted a solid roof as opposed to a polytunnel, flappy, yeah. zippy yeah. thing. Um, but I still wanted open deck space to, to get wetsuits on and not feel like you're falling over things. Yeah. For me, I wanted also um, a, a cabin that went pretty much the full width of the boat. So not a walk to, around? No, right. I'm not a fan of low gunnels and yeah. that sort of tippy feeling, especially when you're out at sea. Just yeah, and it also means you out. get you know a much wider exactly. wheelhouse, don't you, if yeah. you're not trying to make room for the wheel uh, for the side decks. This is the same weight as a rib, right, which is yeah. quite a weird thing looking at it, but essentially it's a very towable boat. So, so the decent tow car, yeah, you've got no absolutely. problem yeah. sticking this behind on yeah. a trailer. So it's, it's all aluminium. Obviously, we've got a bit of rubber here on the rubbing strike, but everything else is, is pure yeah, and alloy. Yeah, it's, it's all wet. Every single part of the boat is welded. There's no nuts and bolts yeah. at all. Every bit, every bit is welded. So they use relatively thin aluminium, but they get incredible strength in the structure. Yeah. Um, they build in buoyancy into the hull as well. So should you somehow put a big hole in it the boat will still float that's, yeah that's, sure that was quite important and you were saying that you obviously you've got these rails up here but you've yeah. got some racks as well yeah. so you can so you can store stuff up here bars that go across for putting kayaks on and yeah. paddle boards and that sort of thing yeah um you've got solar to keep everything topped up electric hatches uh but it's it's effectively a fairly simple boat it's all about the 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 hull shape and the angle of the dead rise um, yeah well it's an inc it's incredibly sharp yeah. hull, and you can see that even from seeing it sitting stationary you look at it from bow on it's incredibly narrow uh, and a very sharp dead rise, dead rise as you say yeah um, so i guess eff efficiency is a, is a, a key point yeah. and, and you know fast cruising when you get going the boat pops up out of the water and very little is actually in the water yeah and they've designed it with um, real stability at speed in mind yeah. so you so even if you're going well over 50 knots it doesn't want to chine walk it yeah. just sits there uh, and very little drag therefore and very, therefore very good fuel efficiency yeah well you know we were talking earlier about some of the videos they've got on their website when it's really charging along in flat water there's barely any hull in the water yeah. at all is yeah. there and at 70 knots which the, we stick the <laughs> biggest engine on at 70 yeah, knots yeah. it just it just sits very planted yeah yeah, yeah amazing so you mentioned the solar panels. So obviously you've got solar actually on top of these vents here, and then you've got separate panels, which I guess supply the domestic feed. That's it. So these keep the battery topped up. Yeah. Um, so you never have to charge up the boat. There's no shore power on this one, is no, there? No, you can get it. Yeah, if, you're, if you're wanting to, you can get it. Um, cause the, but I've got a diesel heater. You can have an electric heater in here as well. Yeah. Um, because obviously these boats get used in a lot colder conditions than we have. I get, and, and in you know, Sweden, Scandinavia, these are these are commuter boats, aren't they? People yeah. are using these to get out to the islands yeah. all year round. You, and you get it. Absolutely. Hard graft, isn't it, for these, these things? Yeah. So these are point A to point B, yeah. fast, any weather. I mean, obviously, if the sea ice is too thick, you can't go, but they'll they'll go through a bit of ice. Yeah. Um, and and safety at speed, that's the key thing. You know, they don't expect you to be an expert driver. You can be very safe in a boat. Like It's designed to be safe at 50 knots without knowing everything. Yeah. It, it, they, they design the hull and the... The trim features so that you you won't get into too much trouble yeah um, and and obviously it's, it's still only a relatively short boat at 8.2 but it can punch above its weight yeah yeah I'm, I'm sure it can and you mentioned the engine the horsepower options so you said the top top is the 450 which is sort of steady performance 70 odd knots but yeah. you've got the, the 300 and there's a 350 and a 400 option as well yeah so we we had a good discussion about this um, when I was up at Vigo and this is the smallest engine it's still 300 horsepower yeah it'll still get to virtually 50 knots but if you want more top end speed, then you can go up to the 450R, yeah. which will get you close to 70 knots. <laughs> but we have 
because of the rougher water here than in the archipelago, yeah. they they just said you don't need top speed, and they're absolutely right yeah. in terms of fuel efficiency. Yeah, this is this is plenty. And you find yourself cruising at so you said sort of 38, 40 yeah, knots basically. The, the sweet spot I think is about 38, 39 knots. It's yeah. just very comfortable. There's plenty more grunt. Yeah, but it's the hull's just sitting really nicely, and it's fuel efficient. Yeah. And you said that. Uh, coronavirus got in the way but you had planned yeah. to bring this and it's built i think you said some two hours north of stockholm yeah. you're going to bring it all the way back on its own on its own bottom until uh, covid got in the way we thought that would be quite fun yeah so, yeah we it's uh, a proper shake down cruise that two mates we're gonna chuck a tent and some camping food and just work our way it's about a thousand miles amazing all coastal so yeah. we're never offshore so it's all coastal all the way back then you come through the keel canal and yeah back back across the english channel and it it's a it would have taken a a good fun week yeah but um at the time germany wouldn't it, everything was open just for one period but germany yeah, was still wasn't. close so we needed to get through the oh, what a shame. but, but you yeah. have you know quite grand cruising plans here don't you you, you want to get down to the, the west country and f further afield yeah and you because you can yeah and you can do it in the i mean we've been out in it was one degree or something this yeah morning. i know it's very it's, blue but it's february and yeah, it's quite cold but it, we were just in jumpers and yeah you know that i suppose that's exactly what you get it exactly. for isn't it it's so comfortable to use in and the it's winter. just it's just using a boat more yeah more often you know it's, it's really annoying if you've got a boat and it's just not right weather to use it yeah but so this you can go out in pretty much anything and you can go off and do uh, long distance and you yeah. keep it on dry stack so it's you know yeah, it's out just, the water it, when yeah. it's not in use and you yeah. can put it in whenever you need it because it's, it's aluminium you, you you don't need to I mean, it's anti-foul but you yeah. don't need to do anything to it no it's now at a, about a year old it's just starting to develop a, it's got like a pattern yeah, hasn't it? yeah it's just starting to oxidize <clears throat> which yeah. it takes some of the shine off it but they do say it's it's good for the metal to yeah. develop that that layer of oxidization and i suppose you know when we're done today you just shut both doors hose it off and and yeah. that's that isn't it it's, it's not a huge amount of maintenance no, which is which be quite nice yeah, yeah yeah great well i think we should have a little bit of a close look on board i think you said they build i don't know if it's 35 of these a year or 35 boats a year in yeah. total they build about 35 boats in total okay there are three there are three models yeah so they do an open version of this with yeah classic rake back windscreen but it's still a walk through boat not a walk around boat and it's got a pull over it's a very heavy duty roof yeah um they, they i think they'd make more of those than any other boat just probably because from a price point of yeah. view and then for the same hull they put a hard top on it which is this one the c8 and then they've recently launched uh, an 11 meter weapon yeah. with 900 horsepower wow um which looks good for yeah i bet i bet it is and and they build in small numbers so i imagine you can be quite flexible with the with the physical layout of each boat they're pretty bespoke yeah you know from the hull up by the by the sounds of it that's it so they won't they won't let you mess around with the hull design but if you wanted for example different seat lay, layouts they'll do that um they, they're fairly flexible but as long as it doesn't affect the characteristics of the yeah. safety of the boat yeah then, then they'll, they'll do anything for you so this isn't so much a living space really this is a st storage area it's yeah. quite functional isn't it so yeah purely functional this yeah. isn't this isn't sun pads it's storage lockers and a little flip this flips up doesn't it? basically reduces engine noise again and spray reduces spray onto okay. the back door yeah yeah uh, and also when you're trimming the boat up so if you're coming up to a beach to, to to uh, stick it on a beach for lunch you can just trim the engine right out and you'd, you'd have to lift that up yeah first. okay makes sense and then obviously you've got you've actually got doors at both ends of the cabin haven't you this is the, the sliding aft door and that's what gives you access into the cabin so yeah. we'll have a look in there shall yeah. we so this was obviously one of the key attractions of this boat this this wheelhouse this is what makes all the difference um but you also mentioned that you've actually slept in here yeah a couple of times now <laughs> tell me about the physics of, of and I, and I'm six foot three. <laughs> yeah yeah how did that actually work in, in practice so the way you do it there's an obviously these flip up okay um, yeah there's an infill cushion here and here so you can sleep one of you along here and then i've got some slats that fill in the uh floor void and you got another person sleeping in there yeah it's definitely camping <laughs> camping cozy very cozy it's warm and dry yeah yeah amazing. yeah oh uh, fabulous and are they as flexible with the layout in here as they are outside i mean if you wanted obviously you've got shock absorbing seats in front of the helm but if you wanted two more of those back here could you do yeah, that yeah you absolutely could so there's 
this is this is enough space for four people here but you could if you wanted to you could get rid of these and stick another couple of suspension seats but actually this is the most effective uh, layout for this type of boat so you've got six people traveling um, yeah and i guess you've got the functionality of yeah, having the bench yeah. if it's just for forward facing seats that's it it's yeah. when the boat's stationary it's not particularly yeah. useful is it and also you can sit you know you can opt for a fridge under there should you need to so yeah um, a lot of people do that but i i didn't want a fridge on the boat so yeah um this i think is the sort of typical layout yeah and there's a fair bit of aluminium on show certainly lower down but we, we've got all this lining as well and this yeah. is all acoustic you know to sort of stop it resonating so much that's so it's it. not so much a echo chamber right that's I guess. It. aluminium boats are notoriously noisy you do get the water you, you hear the water going under the hull um, but they put over 100 kilos of sound deadening up here and certainly when you've got the door closed yeah and the hatch is closed you know at 38 48 knots you can just have a proper conversation yeah and what you really notice when it's idling you don't hear the engine yeah. at all it's it's quite strange when you're moving around at slow speed with the door shut yeah. you, you really have to check whether it's running or not it's I, so so quiet these modern engines are so quiet yeah yeah no it's really really quite sort of refined at, at slower speeds um, and then obviously this is a really focused area this is where your, your helmsman and, and navigator to sit and Obviously, you had ribs before, and um, no doubt you drove them standing up most of the time. How have you found the adjustment, sort of only being able to sit down when you're when you're driving? A bit weird to start mm. with because you're used to your legs taking all the shock. So yeah, it's um, it takes time to adjust to a suspension seat where you you're you're wrapped in the seat and you just let the suspension do all the work. Yeah, and you have I, you still have to I still have to remind myself to relax, but. You know, long distance, absolutely the way forward. Yeah. You, know, you, you if you're doing 100 miles or 150 miles or even more, you know, getting a bashing in a rib is yeah. just, it's just not fun. It, well, and it's tire, it's tiring, isn't it? It's, <laughs> it's really, exactly. really tiring. Yeah. Uh, well, as I imagine, if it's not too rough, you arrive pretty refreshed in yeah, in this. Absolutely. Um, and you know, it's a relatively simple helm arrangement. You've got your MFD there, which I guess shows everything. Chart. You've got radar in this as radar, well, haven't you? Yeah. yeah. Uh, ra they, they, I don't think they've ever built a Vigo without radar no. because they do so much night driving or dark driving in yeah. Sweden. So they, they're literally looking at the, the screen and just hoping it all works. Yeah. But, um, it's it is a simple layout, but it's everything you need. It's just it's like a it, it's all about the ergonomics. So it's yeah. like a racing car in a way. It's just no clutter. Everything's to hand. It's all blackout film, so you don't get reflection. Yeah. Um, and it's it, it is simple. You can you can add more things to it. So you could add a foot throttle or another stalk for the engine trim. But, yeah. Um, it's generally hands on the wheel and. Uh, adjusting the trim tabs from the stalks yeah. by the wheel which is really nice yeah uh, before we have a look at the forward cockpit there's a little anecdote about the windscreen that i think you need you told me earlier that you need to, <laughs> to repeat on camera because it's extraordinary <laughs> oh yes the, uh, yeah i've forgotten that the uh, apparently it's polar bear proof right there that, is a, that's there a is first a, that is the official yeah. classification <laughs> so if you're as they do in these boats, they go up to Finland and uh, go off hunting. If a polar bear jumps in the bow when you're when you're parked up on a beach, it apparently won't get through that. That's good. Well, if we come across one in cows, we know we'll we'll be all right. That's good. Cool. Well, yeah, let's have a look at the uh, at the forward cockpit, shall we? So with no side decks, you have a, this central door, and actually there's really good access out into this fore deck area, which is it's quite wide, isn't it? Actually. You know, you see that the hull is so narrow, but actually this feels relatively beamy. There's quite a lot of space, and it's also deep. Well, it, it's deep enough so you're slightly out of the wind, which is quite nice if you are at anchor. But it's, it, for me, it's, you know, you can, this is this is a little slot for a table. Yeah, there's one in there as well, isn't there? That's so it. you can that's you can it. put a table so in here and there, yeah. You can four of you around a little table for a picnic. But for me, the key is having somewhere that is big enough to strap down tenders and toys um, yeah you said you've got towing eyes here so you yeah can, you can lash well that was for fuel you said yeah, for fuel so bladders but you can lash fuel bladders anything you, you want um, just tie it all down get it in the bow get it secure without it being in the cabin it's just nice if you are at anchor and with kids and, and, and family you you've got room to put wetsuits on and off and you're not just bashing into each other yeah. all the time yeah, no, it's really, it's sort of simple, but very effective, isn't it? It's very simple, just big lockers. You can chuck a fender in here, you can chuck more stuff in the in the sides here, and, and a big anchor locker, but it's just 
simple. That's exactly what it is. It's yeah. simple and functional. And you said you know you've been out in some relatively rough conditions, you know, off the needles for the fast net and things, and you do sometimes get a wave in the bow. But yeah. you've got these big scuttles, haven't you? That's where, right. So the water just yeah. rushes straight out, basically. Yeah, um, the fast net was was um, pretty windy and, yeah. and wind against tide and. The, the length of this boat, at just over eight meters, was just wrong. So the the, the steep chop would every now and then come over the bow, yeah. but it it dealt with it very yeah. efficiently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm sure. Uh, and obviously, it's a you know Swedish boat, so there's quite a lot of focus on how you get on and off the front of it, That's because right. they tend to nudge out to the islands and beach them, don't they? That's Which right. again is another reason why the yeah. aluminium hull's so good. But you you said you can have a ladder to, yeah. to slot on there as well to, yeah. to help you get on and off the bow. That's it. So they're designed, most Swedish boats have these big handrails right at the bow. Yeah. So you come up to the rock and you just jump on and off. But we do have a little ladder that, so if you do beach the boat, you can just climb back up easily without having to try and go around to the stern yeah. every time. Yeah. And you said you haven't spec'd a windlass on this one. You can have that. I mean, you, is it something you still yeah. slightly regret that not, yeah, not having that? Yeah, I, I, well, I've always had ribs where you just throw the anchor over yourself, but everything's got a little bit heavier. Yeah. Uh, on this boat and although it's not usually a problem if it's a really sticky mud which it is some places around cows are found it's just hard, yeah, work, hard work yeah up. so yes i would opt for the yes yeah. next time yeah <laughs> and you've had it a year had it about you a say year. and you know living with it now you know that's a small thing that maybe you change in hindsight yeah. is there anything else that you wish you had or hadn't specced or, or anything you'd change or have you been really really happy with it I wouldn't change much. No, no. Well, that's a good. That's um, a good answer then. <laughs> no, I mean when we were out today and it was glassy flat, a four fifty would be quite <laughs> yeah, yeah. quite good. Fun. More horsepower but, um, can always be welcome. But it's yeah. very rarely flat. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I, it, it's it does everything I need it to do. It, it and actually the guys at Vigo are brilliant. They don't try and sell you everything. They just say, do you really need it? Do you want it? Do you yeah. Need it? And, yeah. Um, half the time you don't need all the options that most boat guys yeah. like to yeah. throw at you. Brilliant. Well, I think that's more than enough talking about it. I think we'd better get out to sea and, and see what it's like on the water. The driving position absolutely sets the tone for what this boat is all about. You just slot into it like a glove and it's adjustable. You can move the seat and you can move the foot plate, but it's a really, really good seated position. Obviously, you can't stand to drive, so you just have to get used to the fact that you're going to be sitting down. But everything is so nice and close to you. The dash is simple in its layout, but it's very easy to, easy to read and it's really easy to control everything. And it, you can just imagine, you know, it's a very, very calm day today, but when you're really hammering through it with this standard suspension seat, taking the edge off it all, um, it would be a really comfortable place to do, to do long journeys. And, you know, cruising at 40 knots in this thing, you've got a range of 200 miles, maybe a little bit more. So, you know, that's what it's designed for. That's what Simon's going to use it for point-to-point -point journeys covering serious distance at good speed, probably in quite tough conditions at, at times. Um, one thing that's a really nice feature on this particular boat, it's an option, is having the stork trim tab controls. So you've got the Lenko buttons up here, as you, you know, see on many boats, but these storks here are right under your hand, which means you can really quickly adjust the trim because it's very sensitive to it. They build their own trim tabs at Vigo, and uh, you know, they're very, very good pieces of kit and they react very quickly. And you know, this boat's got an incredibly sharp hull, so you feel the chip tabs almost immediately. So to have that really fine control right under your hands is, is a really good feature. And we're just at walking pace, basically. We're doing 28 knots now, but really where Simon says he's found the sweet spot is, is more at sort of 38 knots. So we get up to there. There she is, yeah, that's sort of five, five two, that's 40 knots now. I've got the auto trim system on, so you've also got trim of the outboard, of course, which you can control manually on the throttle, but there's auto trim on this, so basically the computer is just doing that all for me. So all I have to think about is the is the side-to-side -side trim, and really, we're well balanced today, it's not, it's not windy, so she just settles into this really lovely, fast cruising speed. And now this is the sweet spot, and you can feel it, the hull feels really happy, feels like you're sort of gliding over the surface engines just melted into the background and it's a little bit noisier because you can hear the water you know it's a metal hull it's a, it's a metal box although there is a lot of sound deadening over my head but you do hear the rush of the water you know sound levels are sort of 80 decibels at full speed which seems noisy but actually I think a lot of that is the water rush which isn't as disruptive as engine noise 
about to go over the ferry wash so you can see how she handles crossing the wash because that's all the waves we're going to have today I think. I hope you've caught that Richard. <laughs> that's the Vigo way, you just go through it. But actually that's a, that's a perfect demonstration of the aluminium hull. That probably sounded quite harsh, it does feel quite harsh. You know, it's solid, it's a solid landing. But what you know is that the hull can absolutely handle it. The boat feels so solid and of a piece. You know, there's no creaks, there's no rattles, there's nothing banging about, flapping around, squeaking. It feels really, really solid and secure. It's, it's clearly a very, very capable thing, even if it's not being challenged in any way today by the conditions we've got here. As you mentioned, performance top speed is 48 knots with this. This has got the single 300 horsepower Mercury. You can have 300, 350, 400, or 450, which will do 70 knots apparently. Um, but you know, this will nearly crack 50 knots flat out. And as I said, it means you can cruise anywhere between 20 knots, although that's not very efficient. Um, and you know, 46 knots if you want to. But that 38, 40 knot sweet spot really is where this boat feels happy and we've just settled back down to that speed now it just feels natural the other thing that we have to discuss is, is the handling because the, the levels of grip are just absolutely phenomenal um, if you trim her right down a little bit of wash coming here there is just so much grip on offer and it, it really does turn so <laughs> so sharply without any loss of grip on the water at all and I'm assured that you can do that at full speed and it's much the same effect though I think that would be a bit unfair on um, the chap holding the camera you can have a, a lot of fun you don't need to be going particularly fast either but yeah as soon as you dial in a bit of lock you can just feel it starting to tighten its grip on the water and you're, you're held in place brilliantly by these fantastic seats yeah, it's not just a sort of flat out performance machine, it's, uh, it's good fun and the twisty stuff as well. Yeah, it just really digs in, doesn't slide at all. Yeah, and it gives you great confidence in what it's capable of. As I said, I think really you get to the, the heart of this boat when you're in rougher conditions than this. But um, yeah, dynamically it really is very good indeed, both in terms of flat out performance, cruising performance and the handling, which is, which is great fun. This is not a boat designed with mass appeal in mind. To most it will appear too sparse, too focused and too light on creature comforts. But if like Simon you treasure toughness and reliability and require a small boat that simply will not give an inch no matter how hard the conditions, then look no further than the Vigo C8, possibly the toughest sub-30 footer on the water.